A fourth day running, a huge demonstration has taken over the center of La Paz to protest against the coup and demand the restoration of democracy in Bolivia. Miners and indigenous organizations from the highlands around the city joined urban movements from El Alto as they marched through La Paz to, seat, to the seat of government. They are demanding the removal of the self-proclaimed government and a return to constitutional order. A group of indigenous protesters, mainly women, sat down in the streets leading to the Legislative Assembly to block access. They said they would stay there into the night. The protests have made it possible for the self proclaimed government to consolidate control over the country. We are going to resist to the last because we have overthrown a right-winger coup monger and dictator before, Gonzalo Sanchez Lozada who is now there in the U.S. empire as a lapdog. Now they have brought his student, Janine Nañez, but she, like the killer Luis Camacho and all the others, will have to pay. The people may be quiet sometimes, but we have memory and we will not surrender. We will struggle to the death if we have to. Most of the marchers set out from La Paz in the morning. Our correspondent Freddy Morales was there. We're in El Alto, and from here, a march is heading down to the center of La Paz. There are really a lot of people marching. Apart from this column that you can see, which itself is quite big, there are several other columns further ahead, closer to the city of La Paz. We're told that there are two other columns on their way, one from the public university of El Alto and another from Desancata, which is where the state oil company has a plant. All the streets around that plant are blocked, which is why for the last 24 hours there has been no gasoline or diesel available in La Paz or El Alto. One of the new features of today's march into La Paz is the participation of a big contingent of miners who have arrived from the state mine at Coro Coro. This is the first time in the last four days of protest against the coup that a group of miners from the interior of the Department of La Paz has taken part. As you know, the miners are a powerful force in Bolivia, and they sometimes carry dynamite on their protests. You can see also the red ponchos, who we've seen before during these protests. These are Aymara campesinos and women from the 20 provinces of the La Paz Department. And of course, there are protesters here from the 18 districts in the city of El Alto, the most populated urban area in Bolivia, with more than a million inhabitants. They are all expressing their opposition to the political events of the last few days, which they say violate the constitution. They say they want to protect democracy in Bolivia, and that's why this is the fourth day of such protests. On Thursday, the Senate of Bolivia swore in Monica Eva Copa from the Movement Towards Socialism Party as its new president in the midst of the coup d'etat. We are living a difficult time, but we are going to be able to cope with it all. We must rid ourselves of radical positions. What our country is looking for right now is peace. I am in black because of my more fallen brothers in the Alto, for my fallen brothers in different places. The movement towards socialism does not want more death. We want peace. We want to work in democracy. We want to give the most immediate response to our country by going to a healthy choice, healthy and as fast as possible. And for them, I call on our brothers from the opposition, and if we have to stay the day and night here, we will. Brothers, sisters, especially the people of El Alto, we are going to do this like this. While the self-proclaimed government in Bolivia has still not been able to consolidate its control, social movements are gathering strength to reverse the coup. Alejandro Kirk reports. Images like this are burnt into the retinas of the Bolivian people. Beltran Mamami was one of the thousands of workers on the protests. In police stations like this, prisoners are mistreated, as the ombudswoman saw for herself. This morning, we have been investigating the situation of the large number of people arrested yesterday, 79 in all. They have been beaten, denied food. When we arrived, some relatives were going in. They are badly overcrowded. There is no room to breathe. The reports of brutality are backed up by videos, but the police deny any such thing. 
We are really dismayed, and we really hope the demonstrators reflect on this. We always adhere to the principle of using force in gradual steps. They come from all sides and take over the center of La Paz. They are amazingly peaceful, but they are clear on what they want. Bolivia is under a dictatorship right now. We want Agnes to resign. She has dealt the country a terrible blow. This is the People's Assembly in San Francisco Square near the government palace. The day before, they were attacked with tear gas here. Nearby, the police and soldiers are standing by again. Their democracy doesn't reach El Alto, but our democracy is here, where the people are. Camacho, Agnes and Alvarazin have ridden roughshod over a peaceful people. The issue of the mainstream media is ever present. We can only watch the international media as far as coverage of the protest is concerned. We have no domestic media at all. That is what we are complaining about. The assembly ends and the conclusions are announced. We propose to continue the resistance against the oligarchy. Approved comrades, approved. The struggle continues, they decide. If they're successful, maybe this square full of soldiers and pigeons will again be full of people.